Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Adobe just released their new Adobe Photoshop Elements 15, and as always on a new release, there are quite a few new features, a lot of things updated, stuff like that. Most of it doesn't really matter. You won't really notice it, speed improvements, things along those lines, but there are a few that are really exciting improvements, and here's my list of the top three improvements here and new features inside of Photoshop Elements 15. First off, the one that I am most excited about, and that is, the tends to come up here, there we go, and that's that you now can put in folders inside of your layers. This is something which I'll be using all the time. It's this something which I've always enjoyed having over in Photoshop, and I've always regretted that Photoshop Elements didn't have this feature, and now it does. So this is in my opinion, the best of the new features. This isn't the most exciting. We'll see that in just a minute down there with that kid. But this is what I think is the best and most useful of the new features. It's easy to use. This is a project, one of my YouTube projects. And as you can see here, I have lots and lots of layers on this thing. I have to scroll down here to see all of these different layers. There's just so much stuff on here. It would be nice if we could organize this into folders and now you can. Now notice I have, here's a you know foreground example up here, shows you what this looks like before I did the work on, there is after, and then from there on down there's a lot of stuff that does a lot of things. For instance, right down here I have the panes of light right there on the lamp, and there they are, and those have a lot of adjustments placed onto those lamp panes. If I could put all this into one folder, it would make it much easier to understand. And here's how you do it. First, up here at the top, we have our standard new layer button right there. Next to that is this new button. This is create a new group. You either can create a new group just above everything else. Just click on that and there's your new group. It goes in above your currently selected layer. And you can then drag and drop things into that group. For instance, I can take this picture here and just drag it into that group. Notice that gets indented a little bit. It's now in the group. I can then close or expand that group and it just kind of cleans things up. You can then rename that list. I'll call it original. So that is then a set or, or a list here of folders or, or layers inside of that particular folder. And I know what that is. Let's see if we can use this to organize our layer structure in here. Let's take the lamp pane. So I'll click on the first one, I'll hold the control key down, and I'll click on these next three layers. All of these are parts of that one effect, the lamp panes effect. You can select your layers, click on the new group button, and it collapses all of those down into that one group. And now I can simply rename this, and all of a sudden it's much easier to understand. I'm going to do the same thing as I go down the rest of my list down here, just putting these things into folders. Here's the background. You can see that's that background picture right up in there. And again, on that background, I have two adjustments for the background and including the background black coloration in there. So all of this stuff in here, all four layers, are controlling that background effect. I'll do the same thing. I'll click on the first one and then click with the control key, click on the next four. This comprises the set of layers that control that background. And once again, click on the new group. There's my new group, and I'm just going to name this. There we go, background effect. So all of a sudden now, my scrolling is much shorter, and it's much easier to see what I'm looking for. Here's my lamp panes, there's the original, and there's a background effect. Now there's one more thing that comes along with this, and that's that you now can also 
colorize layers. If you click on a layer, including a group, right click and down here you can add a color to this. Let's say I wanted to just put orange at the front of all of my groups so they're easy to spot in my list. Now there's a group that has actually red in this case. So you can go ahead and do that. I'll come in here to background effect. Now, this is going to be off screen. No, nope, there it is. Look at that. It's on screen. How about that? I'll make that one. Let's make this one yellow. There we go. So you can color code your layer groups like that, making them easy to spot, or you even can color code groups. Here's a couple that are dealing with just the image of the girl in here, and here's a glow on the girl and an effect on the girl and effect on the face, glow face, and then an effect on that. All this stuff here deals with the image of the girl right there. So what I wanted to just color code these things. Do the same thing, just right click on a layer, and this time it is off screen. Let me see if I can bring that now it can't quite get there, but you see no color below that, it's red, orange, yellow. All those do this one in green. So you can see that there we go. So you can color code individual layers as well. So that's my top feature here in Photoshop Elements 15 is the ability to make groups like that and the ability to color code layers. Both of those are huge productivity improvements and that alone, personally, that alone makes Photoshop Elements 15 pretty much a required update. And this is something which will make the make using this program, if you do a lot of layers like I always do, so much easier, so much easier to control. Really well worth it. Okay, let's look at our next new feature here, and this one is a crop tool. Now, if we go over to our crop tools right there, there we go, crop tool. Before we had the standard crop tool and the cookie cutter tool, and the crop tool allows you to crop in on your picture. You can see the crop adjustments here. It allows you to just kind of, you know, come in like that and crop in tighter on an image. Very, very useful if you have a lot of excess stuff you don't want. You want to kind of zero in on the contents of the image. But there's a new crop tool here, which is even more exciting. Notice how we have this really distorted perspective. It's a wide angle lens, really distorted perspective. Don't worry about those black spots up there. Those are actually birds on the picture. It's not a dirty picture. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see that. There we go. Birds up in the sky. Okay, so we have this picture here which has a lot of distortion to it. The new crop tool right there, the perspective crop tool, allows you to crop in and fix your distortions. The way you use this, click on the tool, come down here, make sure that show grid is selected, I'm going to start down here in the bottom right hand corner, just like the other crop tool, my crop area is what's going to be, be shown. So I'll click right down here, bottom right hand corner, and notice I get a line now. I can then align that up with something in the picture, I'm going right across the, right along the edge of that building there. That's the right side. I clicked at the top, now I drag over, I get another line over here. I'm going to take this over here to a, just about into right there into that building. That's my top corner and I can then pull this down and find the bottom. I'll just then align that up with those buildings. Now if you're not happy with this you can come back in and you can change the position. I want to have that bottom corner right at the corner of the picture. Get as much picture as possible. Take the top corner and I'll make sure that I have a good alignment along the building right there. So this side matches the alignment of the left side building. This side matches the alignment of the right side building. You can change the top if you want to as well. I'll also put this clear to the top. And get my alignment good. There we go. So there's my new grid. Now when I go ahead and hit the enter or return key it's going to crop this image and then stretch it across the top and it'll do two things. It will crop the image in and it's going to straighten the picture out. Let's do the you know, enter key or the green check mark here and there we go. Now it's a taller image as you can see. So let's just make this fit on screen. There we go. So there it is. We've cropped in. We kept the full width on the bottom. We've cropped into the picture and we straightened the picture up. 
So it's a great tool, very, very useful. I'll be using this one a lot with architectural style landscape images. Okay, the last tool, and let's just go over here to our photo bin again. Right down here, the last tool I consider actually magical. This, this tool is just amazing on what it can do. I don't even know how they manage this. So here's our picture of a kid. This is just kind of a neutral expression in here, not too exciting. If you want to make it you know, a better expression, that's where this next tool comes in. Go up to Enhance and come down to Adjust Facial Features right there, brand new option. Click on that. Adobe Photoshop Elements goes in, looks at the picture, figures the picture out, and then it determines where the face is on the image. And there we go. It's found the picture, found the face. As you can see, it has brought up the new Adjust Facial Features at the top. Now in here, we have four sections, lips, eyes, nose, and face. On the lips, you can adjust the smile right here. It actually goes through. It finds the mouth. It finds the corners of the mouth. It finds the nose. It finds the corners of the nose. It finds the eyes, the corners of the eyes. It finds the forehead. It finds the chin. It finds the jawline. It finds all these points and then allows you to control those. If I want to make this more of a smile, I'll just grab the smile slider and pull it to right. Look at that. I and mean, this is just so absolutely amazing. So there we go. There is the kid is now smiling. If I go to the eye section, click on that. I'm going to tilt the eyes a little bit. Just a little higher on the right and left hand sides. Adds to the mouth going up and sides. And the kid is now a happy kid. He's smiling. And it was that easy to do. Let's say I wanted to make him sad. I'm just going to pull the tilt of the eyes the other direction. Bring him down a little bit on the sides like that. Let's go back to the lips. And let's bring the corners down. And all of a sudden, there we have a sad kid. I can take the standard picture, make him either happy or sad, very quickly just by using these slider controls. This is such an amazing tool. And again, it does the whole thing automatically, as you can see here, just absolutely perfect, just like magic. You can even adjust the distance between the eyes if you want to. You can adjust the size of the eyes. So you have all kinds of fun in here. You can do the, the width of the eyes or just the height, make the eyes a bit more open, like that. And of course, you can also do the nose, make the nose longer or shorter. Shorter nose, younger kid. Bring it, you know, skinnier, wider. And same thing on the face. You can adjust the width of the face. Look at that. It keeps the eyes and nose about where it's supposed to be and adjusts just the width. Forehead height in here. So I can kind of bring bring these things in a little bit. Let's make the forehead a little bit taller. Bring the jawbone in just a little bit like that. Bring the chin down a little bit. And let's go back to the nose. Our nose is smaller. That's fine. Let's go back to the eyes. Let's make the eyes just a little bit larger. Just a touch. And all of a sudden, the kids a year younger or two years younger. So it's an amazing, amazing tool, practically magical. Now, if you have two people in your picture or three people, it'll find all those faces and give each one a circle. Just click on the circle that you want to work on. The other ones will be grayed out. Click on the circle and you'll work on that one face. It'll do multiple faces as well. Choose OK. And there we go. There's our new kid. Let's just do a, an undo on that. This control Z. I'm just going to use the control Z keyboard shortcut here. So there is before. And let's go ahead and redo that. There's the after. So it's an amazing tool and absolutely spotlessly perfect. So there it is. That's the third of these top new features here in Photoshop Elements 15. And for my my money, my opinion. Being able to do these things, the, the face, I'll use it on occasion, but not that much, but it's still, it's a magical tool. I'll use this one more, just because of the kind of photography that I tend to do. And I'll use the ability to make groups over here inside of the layers. I'll use this all the time. And for these three tools here, this the facial adjustment and the perspective crop and the layer groups, these three tools in my opinion, make this a must-have version of Photoshop Elements. This is really a huge advance 
over the previous versions. So there you go. That's my choice for the top three tools in Adobe Photoshop Elements 15. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 